Hello, uh, Rod Kane here from Washington Grand Company. Uh, once again, I'm here to talk to you about my favorite game, uh, Triumph. Uh, should always have a picture of the cover, I suppose. But uh, today, we're going to talk uh, in more detail about the troop types. So I'm going to flip in the back of my book to the appendix, and uh, one of the first things in the appendix uh, is the troop type description in a table that shows all of the troops. So we're going to go over that table today. Uh, Appendix A, Troop Types. Uh, open order, closed order, uh, both foot and mounted. So arrayed before you, I have one of each troop type in the game. Um, I'm using three different scales from my collection in order to present all the different troop types. Uh, so we have our 28 millimeters that we've been playing with, our 15 millimeter playing with, and I borrowed one of my 60 millimeter uh, figures. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually uh, zoom in on the figures and uh, in trying to focus mostly on miniatures in these videos. Uh, we're going to focus on the miniatures and I'm going to walk through each troop type and explain a little bit about them um, and uh, why they are in the game. Uh, one of the critical things in, in doing a, uh, a miniatures game uh, they can make or break the game in my opinion is how you categorize the different troop types so this is why I think this is a very important section and we may zoom in on certain troop types and do more detail uh, but the troop types can really make a game uh, too many troop types uh, too complicated uh, too few troop types too simplistic um, so for each person you got to find the balance that you like uh, triumph happens to hit right where I really enjoy the balance of enough detail to, to play out those historical battles that I want to play, but enough uh, uh, streamlining uh, to make the rules simple enough to teach to new players and to sit down and play within a few minutes after learning the game. So hope you'll stay with me and uh, we're going to go through all the different troop types, uh, kind of an overview, and then uh, you know we'll, we'll do some more discussion on some of the more in detail and in action on the table in some later videos. Thanks. So Triumph has 26 different troop types, and we're going to start uh, in Appendix A of the book, which is page 43, and just go through um, the open order foot, the closed order foot, and then the open order mounted and the closed order mounted. Just a quick overview. I might touch on a few of my favorites, but um, let's start with archers. So we are going to do a section on archery and explain long-range fire, but archers are one of the units in the board that can actually shoot at range. So archers represent your uh, large formations of uh, well-trained, well-equipped uh, missile troops that have a good supply of ammunition and are going to fire at volley. So they can actually show a effect in the range combat part of Triumph, which we will cover in a separate video. But these are archers. They are open order. So you can see they're four to a stand. They're on a um, slightly deeper base than the heavy foot. Um, recommended for what I'm playing with here is an 80 millimeter wide base and so the archers are on a 40 millimeter or a, um, basically one MU deep uh, base. Next, one of my uh, favorite troop types um, and, and I want to take a moment here to talk a little bit more about this troop type and some of its sister troop types. Um, hor uh, these are basically bow levy but I think of them as horde with bows. Um, one of the problems you have with troop types is everybody spends a lot of time on the sexier troops, uh, the knights, the elite foot, you know, your Roman legionnaires, um, your uh, elite cavalry, your elephants, chariots. But sometimes to make a system really play out a historical battle or to really represent what was going on in history, you need to represent, represent the poor slobs that were just part of the infantry and didn't really want to be there. Well, in most game systems, they all get lumped into Horde. And we do have Horde in Triumph, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But think of these guys here as your low-quality bowmen. Um, so these are Horde with bows, to some extent, or anti-mounted Horde. Um, they have bows. They don't have a lot of ammunition. Nobody's bringing them in extra arrows. They're not very well-trained, and their bows are probably not the best equipment in the world. Uh, but 
they can fire art arrows, so they are dangerous to certain troops that have the ability to run away from uh, slower foot troops, uh, but their combat is worked out in base-to-base -base contact. So these are bow levy. They don't fire at range. They're very, very slow. They're on a deeper base than their archer friends because they're in a looser formation. We typically represent them with three figures. You could put five. Um, some people like to make their, their hordy bow levy look a little bit more crowded, but we, we recommend at least a minimum of three. Uh, it's good for troop identification when you're playing in a, in a tournament game. Um, but these are bow levy. So it's your, your peasant archers, your, your shire levy with bows. Um, uh, your, a lot of biblical armies had tons and tons of poorly equipped archers that you know represent a, a large part of the army. And in Triumph, having these extra uh, figures really, really allows you to uh, uh, represent some battles that I don't think you could represent without this particular type of troop. Next, we have your standard uh, light foot. Uh, so three to a stand. Once again, they're open order, so they're on one MU base width uh, or base depth. Uh, everything's on a two MU base width, of course. So these are light foot, loose formation, faster moving, um, not able to fight against heavy and heavier foot, but they're not going to stand up in a, in a straight fight with them as long. But they don't mind going through rough terrain. It doesn't break up the, the loose formation, and uh, they move pretty quick. They don't really want to stand up in the open against mounted. Uh, next, another category of horde. Uh, why do I say that? We call these rabble. And what are rabble? Rabble are kind of the horde that fight in a loose formation, not very well equipped, but they can go into rough terrain. So this is horde that can travel through the woods and fight in the woods. Um, the close packed horde of a lot of systems won't work in rough terrain. They get penalties in rough terrain, but we know there were lots of poor quality, large groups of um, peasant troops that would hide in the woods, hide in the rocks, uh, hide in the uh, swampy areas. That's the rabble. So this is rabble. Uh, they're not especially fast. They, they travel 3MU, about the same as most uh, heavy foot and other, uh, but they don't have a penalty for going into the woods or the rough terrain, and they can move in a group in the woods or rough terrain. Um, and they're on a deeper base, just like the bow levy, so they need a little more space to fall back. Otherwise, they're a little more brittle because if they can't fall back, they shatter or uh, collapse and dis disappear. Um, so this is your rough terrain uh, horde. Or low-quality light foot. Uh, next, we have light spear. Now, I've got two stands of light uh, spear, and these are in 15 millimeter. Uh, once again, they're on a 1 MU uh, base depth and a, two, and a 2 MU base width. Um, these are classical Indian or mountain Indian spear, and they are backed up by my wood elf spear uh, because I just thought it'd be fun to put some wood elves out there. Yes, we do have a fantasy version of Triumph, and yes, we will be talking about that later. Um, so the reason I have two stands out there... Um, Spear are one of the units that can actually receive, or light spear are one of the units that can receive uh, rear support in certain circumstances against certain troops. So we have some units in the game that can get rear support. So having a stand behind them makes them fight better, but only against certain troop types and in certain circumstances. So you have to look that up on the chart, and we'll cover that uh, when we go into more detail on the, the QRS chart. So light spear, they're basically light foot but with long pointy sticks and they're a little bit better at fending off mounted that's what the long pointy sticks are for and then the long pointy sticks also allow them to have some rear support under certain conditions that's your light spear not quite as fast as light foot the pointy sticks make them go a little bit slower um next we'll bring back our sea people raiders uh raiders another really great troop type um they're heavy foot uh well-equipped, but fighting in an open order. So they're typically uh, going to be your well-armored, well-trained, um, uh, swords, spears, good weaponry, but fighting in a loose order. Um, some of the Viking armies fall into this category, Viking raiders, for example, when they're not fighting shield wall. The sea people um, have a lot of raiders. Uh, they're faster than the heavy foot because of the loose order. They can go into rough terrain or uh, um, uh, woods, things like that. Um, but they don't stand up as well against mounted in the open, so they're a little bit more vulnerable to a mounted attack because of their loose formation. So that's the raiders. Uh, skirmishers, another 
fun troop type. To be a skirmisher, um, first of all, they are the most open. In fact, they're the special open order troop that can actually pass through anything. Remember we talked about how any open order troop can pass through any open order troop. Um, skirmishers can pass through anybody, including closed order troops, and closed order troops can pass through them. They're the only exception to that rule. Uh, to be a skirmisher in Triumph, you have to be a troop type that fought with a missile weapon. Uh, no, they don't fire at range, um, just like the bow levy. So they don't have ranged fire because they're not firing large volleys of arrows in this scale. Um, but they do have the special ability to dance away from almost everybody. So unless the guy that they're fighting also has a missile weapon of a bow or a sling or long range of some kind, handgun, uh, another skirmisher, for example, they are, are very rarely killed in a straight fight because they typically evade away from most of their enemies. Um, so that's what their ability with their missile weapon gets. So uh, in Triumph, the examples like the Roman Velites, uh, which are throwing javelins, uh, they're going to be lightfoot because they have a javelin. Uh, so they have a weapon that allows them to, you know, they're moving fast, but they got to throw it. They got to get into hand thrown range. Um, so Roman Velites would tend to be lightfoot. Um, Cretan slingers uh, or bowmen, um, those would be uh, skirmishers. So you've got to have a weapon that can outreach a thrown weapon, typically, to be a skirmisher in Triumph and get that special evade ability from other troops. Uh, last on the list of open order foot uh, are Warband. Uh, Warband, um, they very similar, three to a base, to like a light foot looking troop type, but the difference is the Warband have some special abilities that light foot don't have. So these tend to represent your... Uh, warrior-like uh, fighting style where these guys would come in with a furious charge and uh, they would attempt to uh, scare the enemy as much as actually fight them. But the warband tend to be a little bit wilder form of foot troop and they have a special ability where they shatter certain other kinds of troops. And we'll talk about shatter um, on the QRS in more detail. But what that means is there's certain troop types that when they face warband if the warband beat them by one point, they actually destroy the enemy. Uh, so they don't have to double them or trap them to kill them. They can actually shatter them. Um, warband have that ability and um, knights and a couple other uh, units have that. So that's warband. Uh, next, artillery. Uh, we're looking at nearly the end of the range as far as the rule system goes into the gunpowder era, just barely. But artillery, uh, just like you think, um, it's on a square base. Uh, doesn't move very fast. Takes an extra command pip to move artillery or a group with an artillery in it. Um, but it has a long range, so it fires farther even than the bow. It fires 8 MU. Um, and so an artillery piece is very dangerous for ranged fire in front of it. Um, but it doesn't want to fight in hand-to-hand, -hand, obviously. It's hard to maneuver, and it only fires on its own turn. So maneuvering the artillery into uh, effective range can be difficult, but it is very dangerous to things that it shoots at. Um, elite foot. So here we have a unit of house carls, and you'll notice the narrower base. So they're on a less than half MU base. They're on a 30 millimeter base for these um, uh, for these elite foot. So we're getting into the closed order foot. Um, this base, 80 millimeters wide, uh, 40 millimeters, or sorry, 30 millimeters uh, deep, okay? So the elite foot, these are the best of the best for foot troops. Um, they're the best uh, combat factor versus foot. Uh, they have a reasonable or average combat factor, or higher than average combat factor against mounted. They're not as good as archers. They're not as good as some of the missile arm troops. But they'll, they'll, they're the best of the best when it comes to foot. So they're plus five when fighting foot. They're plus three when fighting mounted. Um, they're slow, hard to maneuver. Um, they're a four-point stand. They, um, they represent house carls. They represent veteran uh, legionnaires, um, elite forces from many different armies. Um, so these are going to be your, your household guards. Um, we typically represent them four to a stand. And you usually try to distinguish them from the heavy foot, which I'll bring out next. So here's heavy foot. So, for example, in a Saxon army like this one, this little Saxon force here, uh, my heavy foot, uh, shields, spears, 
depending on the time period, maybe not a lot of armor. They fought in a shield wall. They're plus four. They're plus three versus mounted. They're on the same base. There's four of them. But I distinguish these from the other guys because you can see, obviously, heavily armored, not so heavily armored. These are your heavy foot. And the heavy foot tend to be the core of a lot of armies uh, in, in, the, in the Middle Ages, for example. You'll have a lot of heavy foot um, and a uh, very good solid troop, only three points. So you can get more heavy foot for your money than you can get the elite foot. Horde. Now this is horde, horde in the traditional sense of a lot of guys in a square base, moving very slow, um, very, you know, heavy, dense formation. They don't want to go into the woods. Uh, they don't want to go up the mountains and into the rough terrain. They just want to stand in the open and mostly go home. Um, hard to maneuver, but because there's a lot of them, they're a plus three. So they're pretty decent. Uh, they're actually pretty decent in a stand-up fight against uh, a lot of foot troops. Um, they're not bad, and they're only two points. Uh, that's something I forgot to mention about the rabble and the bow levy. These three different horde stands... Uh, they don't fight very well, but they also don't cost very much. So you can lose two of these guys or two of these guys for every elite foot that you lose uh, and still be in the same place. So they, they're a two-to-one ratio as far as losses in the army. So Horde, um, not a maneuver army, but they can stand in a line and they can they can uh, stand up in a fight pretty good. Next we have, and i got two of them out here, Pavis. Uh, and yes, these are Elven Pavis. Um... So what are pavis? Pavis tend to be um, a thin line of uh, protection, uh, either maybe some fixed shields, uh, typically a thin line of infantry in the front. Uh, the elves are a really good representation of it. I got a thin line of spears or uh, foot troops in the front with shields, and the back is archers. So this is a combined formation. Um, it was used historically by a lot of different armies, um, and it represents... Thin line of foot, defensive formation, behind them uh, uh, archers. And this unit also fires at range because these are uh, formed archers firing volleys at range. That's Pavis. And yes, once again, teasing about Triumph Fantasy here. Those are my, those are my elves, a.k.a. Lord of the Rings, uh, the scene in some of the movies with the archers behind the heavy foot. Uh, Pike. Uh, another one where I've got two stands of pike out here because pike receive rear support. So pike is another unit that can get rear support from another unit of pike directly behind it. Uh, it will get an advantage against certain troop types, certain combinations. Um, the pike, uh, as you'd expect, uh, they're carrying weapons much longer than a typical spear. And they're using them in the pike block or pike formation um, and very effective against mounted, and also not too bad against foot, uh, under the right conditions uh, with the rear support, very very deadly troop. Uh, it's a three-point unit, um, so you can afford to buy a couple extra of these so that you can get that rear rank support. Um, but yeah, Pike, very, very effective unit against certain troop types, certain conditions. Uh, and oh, Pike once again, four to a stand, and they're using the narrow stand for closed order. Spear. Um, spear also, four to a stand, closed order. What's the difference between these guys and these guys? They've got spears and they've got spears. Well, these guys have long pointy sticks known as spears, but they were mostly used to jabbing other guys with long pointy sticks who were also on foot. These are Russian spear. And these guys are actually a little bit more expensive, four point unit versus three point. But their job uh, was to defend against mounted a lot. So they spent a lot of time using their long pointy sticks against mounted. So while they're plus four versus foot, plus three versus mounted, these guys are plus four versus foot and they're plus four versus mounted. So what makes a heavy foot into a spear? The uh, experience in fighting mounted with that spear, essentially. So these are two different categories of troops. Um, so, for example, we talked about my heavy hoplites the other day. The hoplites were all classified as heavy foot. They could also be elite foot. Elite foot and heavy foot usually didn't spend a lot of time against mounted. They fought other foot. Spear spent time fighting mounted. That's why they get that mounted bonus. Um, so that's the difference between a unit of spear and heavy foot. 
And yeah, you do have to do something to discern and make sure you know that these are spear and these are heavy foot on the battlefield. Um, but th those two different troop types are kind of critical because there is a big difference between being able to fight mounted and fighting foot. War wagon. Uh, just like it looks. It's a wagon. It's on a square base. It's got a bunch of guys inside, usually with handguns, crossbows, some kind of weapon. There are not very many war wagons historically in the armies, but there, there were some significant uh, armies that did use these war wagons, so they are in the game. Um, it's another unit that can shoot at range. Um, it can shoot from all directions. Uh, it can um, uh, uh, fight in any direction. It has no flank per se. Um, however, it cannot initiate combat. It's the only unit in the game that can't initiate combat. So it's kind of a unique unit in, in that. So, for example, if these units of spear were, were charging past this war wagon because they just defeated somebody, this war wagon is not in combat with these spear. It's, it's only in combat with the spear if the spear choose to fight the war wagon. Otherwise, it's just a shooting unit. It didn't want to go into combat unless it had to. So that's the war wagon. Um, and war wagons are a lot of fun, but they're also slow and take up a lot of space on the table. Uh, warriors. Okay, so once again, I put these guys two out here because warriors can get rear support. Uh, warriors are the close order formation, if you can call it that, of the war band. Remember we talked about war band? So think of uh, war band as uh, the Lucy uh, light version of the warriors. The warriors are much closer. Uh, they represent a different style of fighting. They represent a different uh, uh, tribes uh, that fought with units in this closer formation, frantic charge, uh, try to hit the Roman line or the fixed line of heavy infantry, these Gauls, for example. And if they break through the line, um, they can shatter the heavy foot. So this is another unit that has that special ability to shatter um, or destroy another unit because it represents, they broke formation, we're gonna chop you up now. Um, so they're, they're, uh, they're also, um, much like the Warband, because of that ability, they're also impetuous. So this is one of the units that always charges forward. So when they win, they come forward, even if they didn't double you and they didn't kill you. If they shatter you or they push you back, they, they charge forward. So that's warriors. Um, typical of like the ferocious Gallic tribes of northern uh, Italy, southern, southern uh, Central Europe. Um, okay, so that's the foot. So we went through the open order, closed order foot. Now we're going to talk about mounted. Oh, and here's an example of one of my favorite kinds of mounted. Bad horse. And you look at these guys and you say, well, well, why are those guys bad horse? They look like they're pretty well equipped. Well, that's because these are essentially Vikings riding ponies. Now, uh, Viking cavalry, not notorious for its elite status. Um, so these guys are considered bad horse, and we have other forms, the other armies that had bad horse. My Greek army can also have some bad horse, which represents poorly equipped guys on horseback, uh, not very well trained. But these are, let's, let's call these Vikings that are riding stolen ponies. Um, they didn't really want to fight on these ponies, they're just using them for transportation. So when these guys get off of their ponies, they're going to be heavy or elite foot. But on the ponies, they're called bad horse, which means, you know, I like to call it just because you got horses doesn't make you cavalry. Uh, so they're plus two, plus two. They're pretty fast. They have no special abilities. They don't dance away from anybody. Um, so they're, they're uh, uh, low quality uh, mounted. Next, for this I'll show you my larger figures. This is a battle taxi. Now what, pray tell, is a battle taxi? Um, just like it sounds, you'll notice this is Hector, and Hector, Hector is not in his chariot, uh, because Hector would ride up to battle in the chariot, and then he would get out and he would fight. And then if things didn't look really good, he would turn that chariot around and he would get in and he would ride away. Um, so the battle taxi is exactly what it sounds like. It's a unit to transport the guy to the battle, doesn't mean he fought in it. Um, so in... The Trojan War, you have uh, descriptions of battle taxis. Uh, so you've got uh, ancient Greece, uh, 
Uh, some of the British chariots will be classified as battle taxis. So they represent um, some small elite warriors that ride up, fight, ride away to another part of the battlefield. They've got some mobility. They have um, uh, some escape capabilities in the game where they can get away from combat. Uh, but they don't hit that hard because they're not large numbers and they're not really an impact weapon um, per se. Uh, they could be used that way, but they weren't nor normally an impact weapon. Chariots. Uh, this definitely qualifies as one of my favorite uh, uh, aspects of the game is the chariot. Uh, the chariot uh, in Triumph um, is kind of uh, represented as a missile platform, a mobile missile platform, that will take advantage of you if you uh, break formation. So chariots have a shatter ability. They're not as tough or impacting as knights, which we'll talk about la last in the uh, open order foot. But they'll hit you, they ride up, they fight. If you break formation, they will shatter a lot of the foot troops. So chariots versus a lot of the, well, let's say raiders, for example. Uh, the chariot hits the raider. If it wins the combat, the chariot rides them down. Uh, so it don't have to win, it doesn't have to double, it just has to win by one. However, a lot of the foot troops, when they beat the chariot, because it is a missile platform that's riding in and doing this circular motion, uh, when it rides in and fights, if it loses, frequently it evades. Um, so if you don't have missile weapons to counter out the, counteract the speed of the chariot, there's a good chance that you're not going to kill it in a straight fight. You either have to surround it, trap it, or shoot it with something that has missile weapons. Bow levy can be killed by the chariot very easily, but the bow levy can kill the chariot. Typically wouldn't fight in this scale difference, but, you know, what the heck. Maybe you give them a better chance. Um, so chariots, an excellent uh, feature in the game Triumph. Chariots, uh, bow levy, rabble allow you to make some fantastic uh, biblical battles uh, using Triumph. Um, combined with some of the other troop types, it makes for a really great biblical battle. Elite cavalry. Okay, so these are the guys that have horses, have armor, uh, typically have bows, um, and also have swords, lances, javelins. So this is these are the best of the best elite cavalry. Um, they have missile weapons, typically because they could ride up and shoot you with bows. Uh, they have heavy armor, swords, and lances, and spears, because they could also ride up and point you with a sharp pointy stick or hit you with a sword. Uh, elite cavalry. So these are well-trained, well-equipped, and, and ready to fight. Um, uh, it's it's a uh, it represents a large swath of the uh, Saracen cavalry, um, other elite cavalry. These are not knights, um, but they are cavalry. Uh, heavily armored Mongol cavalry would be elite cavalry. Horse bow. Um, so here's your typical Mongol cavalry or your light Saracen cavalry. Um, these are the guys that were um, shooting from the saddle. Uh, they ride up, they shoot, and they ride away. Uh, they're going to they're they're shooting once again because they have bows. They do have the shooting capability, but not at range in this scale. So typical of the Saracen cavalry, they're going to ride up. They're going to fight base to base contact. But these guys, they can't kill them in a straight fight. They're going to dance away. So. Even though they rode up and they got doubled, they're just going to evade. So if you want to catch the horse bow, you're going to have to get somebody on their flank. Or you're going to have to have somebody that has missile weapons. Because the missile weapons can, can actually kill them. Oh, remember our bow levy? Well, they're, they're cheap. They're not very good against a lot of things, but they can shoot horse bow. So when the horse bow fight the bow levy, they have to worry about dying. Horse bow. Very fun troop. Uh, one of the fastest goes 8MU along with the jab cab, so it's a very fast unit. Javelin Cavalry. Um, this represents the light cavalry that didn't bring bows. Okay, So they're lightly armed, so they're fast. They go 8MU. Um, they're usually throwing a weapon. Uh, they probably aren't getting close enough to poke you with a stick, but they will. Um, but they typically want to ride up, throw weapons, harass, um, and then ride away. 
They also can dance away from most of the heavy foot. So these guys really wouldn't be that scary to the javelin cavalry. They'd ride up, they'd throw their javelins, they'd ride away. So even if they get defeated, they would ride away. They cannot do that with the elite foot because the elite foot are good enough to time it and they'll throw stuff right back at them. So they'll wait till the right moment, they'll throw stuff. If they double them, they can kill them. So an interesting unit type um, can be used very effectively against heavy foot and slower moving troops. <clears throat> Not as good against mounted. Knights. Everybody loves knights. Knights are one of the hardest hitting um, open order uh, cavalry. <clears throat> open order mounted. Uh, they do a great job uh, breaking through enemy foot line. They're also not bad against uh, most mounted. Um, they are impetuous, like the Warband and the Warriors. So they'll charge forward and they win, even if they didn't kill their enemy. Um, which gets them into trouble quite often. Knights have a unique problem with uh, Horsebow. In a straight fight, they can't kill the Horsebow. The Horsebow don't get close enough, so the Horsebow will tend to panic. Uh, that's a special move where they turn around... Well, they back up one base, they turn around, and they run their full move, hopefully not running into anything. If they run into something, they're dead, and the knights charge forward. Um, so the problem that the knights get into with the horse bow is they tend to hit the horse bow and get drawn really deep into a combat, get surrounded by the horse bow, and get killed. So they have to be very careful when they're fighting other mounted. They're, they're impetuous, they're a fire-and-forget weapon. They have similar issues with jab cav, except that the jab cav can actually shatter the knight. So knights shatter a lot of different things. Uh, javelin cavalry will actually shatter knights. Okay, the last two mounted units. Oh, we'll bring them out here at the same time. Cataphracts and elephants. So, cataphracts. Cataphracts are not impetuous, heavily armored, dense formation on a square base, um, and cataphracts are your Mounted spear is what I think of them. They're plus four, plus four. They don't care who they're fighting. They don't shatter too many, or shatter anybody. Uh, they can be shattered by a couple things. They're shattered by things that would typically shatter knights. So they have a few people they're worried about. Really good at taking out uh, archers and bow-armed troops because they ride them down um, like many of the mounted do, but they ride them down with impunity because they're, they're very immune to the archery fire. Um, so cataphracts are really interesting unit. Elephants. Um, so obviously you can't have an ancients game without elephants um, because there is a large and exciting time period when elephants were used as a weapon of war. Um, impetuous, like knights, so the elephants will always charge forward when they win. Um, they're pretty tough. Uh, they do take extra points to move, so they're a little harder to move, like a war wagon or a, an artillery piece. So a little bit more difficult to command. Um, and the elephants are also one of those troop types that, uh, when they back up, they cause problems for your own army. Um, so elephants, a lot of fun, uh, interesting uh, unit, fun to paint, fun to model, um, and, and a very fun game unit to play on the on the game table. So that covers all of our different uh, unit types today. I'll put, I'll put Hector back out here because he looks really cool. Um, and that's just a quick overview. I didn't go through all the pluses and minuses for each unit because you can look that up on the chart. Uh, and I will do some examples of when we play the game, what some of the different abilities are like, by maybe playing through some scenarios and showing how the game actually flows. But uh, 26 troop types um, in Triumph. Open order foot, closed order foot open order mounted, and closed order mounted. Um, and with that range of troop types, I think that the game does a very effective job representing historical battles from the biblical period uh, in early history all the way up until the Renaissance um, and before you get serious with gunpowder. Uh, a lot of fun to play, um, a lot of fun troop types to collect. And I encourage you to go out on MeshWesh, take a look for your favorite army from history, and see what types of troops are available there. And, uh, you know, look over those armies and get a feel for if that's an army that you'd like to collect. And once again, uh, my name is Rod Kane. I'm with the Washington Grand Company. And thanks for watching. The game is called Triumph.